Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, starting off a 50-cent pick four at Gulfstream Park on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. Here's the field for race number five. It's the La Prevoyante, a grade three going a mile and a half on the turf for fillies and mares. Todd Pletcher as the seven to five morning line favorite in the number four, Always Shopping. Todd took the blinkers off last time out, hoping to wake up Always Shopping, and she woke up with a good performance. I wonder if it's also, this horse just really loves Gulfstream Park. Yeah, maybe a combination of the two. She really does uh, like Gulfstream Park. The The distance of this race is no problem for either. Um, she ran well last time, Dan. I'm not going to deny that. Um, and if she runs a, a similar race here, I, I guess she's going to be tough. I felt like that, you know, seven to five morning line was maybe a little short. Um, but in, in most ways, she is probably the horse to beat here. And I think she might be the horse to catch as well. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And I know Onyx, the number three, is time form U.S.'s expected pace setter. But looking over her PPs, I don't really see a ton of speed. I think Always Shopping likes to be forwardly placed. And I think Tyler's going to have her first or second going into the first turn. Yeah, I sort of agree with you there. I, I do feel like she's going to be on the early lead in this race. And that's going to make her extra dangerous. I'm not willing to give up on the number one Sorrel just yet. This horse made her uh, North American debut at Gulfstream during the 2021 championship meet. I don't think she ran badly at all when behind Warlike Goddess and always shopping in the Orchid. It was a race where she wanted to get to the outside on the turn, but was herded in by Warlike Goddess. And by the time she got clear, Warlike Goddess, a very good filly, was gone. Yeah, I agree. I thought she ran well on that race. I did not like um, her Long Island after that, but, you know, considering the layoff, uh, maybe she had an excuse for that race. Yeah, I don't know what to make of her most recent start, though, Dan, where she finished behind several of these horses, um, just sort of raided along off the pace and saved ground all the way. I mean, I guess you could say that, you know, being inside and behind horses wasn't, wasn't ideal in that kind of a race, but she still didn't really do any running through the stretch. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't know what to do with her uh, in this race because well, I thought she ran fine um, back in March of last year. I don't like her last two starts. I think Sister O'Toole is somewhat interesting at a bigger price. Her last race, the Sunshine Philly and Mare Turf, that race was washed off the turf to the Tapita. It was a distance that might be a little bit short for her, and maybe they were just using that race as a prep. She has run well at longer distance races, that Wea on turf at uh, Belmont, the Maple Leaf on synthetic at Woodbine. Uh, I think she's going to give a better performance, and I think she has more tactical speed than the pace projector indicates. Yeah, I feel like she's going to need a, a better trip if she's going to be competitive in here. Um, I still have my questions just about, you know, how good she is. She won that allowance race at, at Belmont last summer, um, going a mile and a quarter. But I didn't love that field that she beat. High opinion, the horse that she ran down there just doesn't want to go that distance. And to me, that's the only reason this horse won that race. Her, her form since then has been fine, but it didn't necessarily make me want to bet her in here. The three Onyx, uh, expected to be the pace projector, should at least be close to the pace, was a multiple stakes winner on turf at Gulfstream as a two-year-old, but she hasn't won since, so now she'll be making her five-year-old debut, beaten by Always Shopping last time out. I wonder if she's kind of hit her plateau. Yeah, I wonder too. They tried to stretch her out for the first time in that most recent start, and I guess you could say that she had some success there. I mean, she didn't run a terrible race, um, but she didn't as far as I could tell anyway, didn't have much of a trip excuse in there, got out to the clear in the stretch and ran on, um, just was never a real threat in that spot. Always Shopping won this race last year with an absolutely perfect trip. Her tactical speed usually allows her to get good trips. We'll watch her prep for this year's La Prevoyante in the Via Borghese going a mile and three-eighths. She is in between horses. She is facing a stern challenge from Harajuku on the outside, and she digs down deep to win it. And I wonder if Harajuku kind of beat herself by changing to her left lead at a crucial moment. Yeah, she might have. Um, it took some down to a head bob here at the end, and uh, it's going to be always shopping prevailing. She ran fine in here. Again, it's back at Gulfstream Park um, where she really likes it. 
Um, and maybe that's all it's going to take, Dan. I, you know, really struggle to look at races that way. She was really good down here last year. The rest of her campaign um, as a five-year-old was terrible. Um, got back on the beam last time. I don't know. I guess she's the horse to beat, but I didn't fully trust her. Well, nice to know the number five ran into a hot horse and tuned. Tuned would probably be a price in this race. That was the all along back at Laurel in October. She only gave an even effort that day. Now she has to deal with this field and a tough distance off the layoff. Yeah, I mean, she just hasn't uh, ever run a race that's going to make her competitive in here. I guess if, you, if you're going to bet her at a big price, you're just going to have to hope that she really likes the distance. We saw Beautiful Lover finish third in the Via Borghese. She's just a very consistent mare for the Clement Barn. She seems to show up each and every time. Doesn't win very often, however. Yeah, that's what I didn't like about her. Um, she tends to get good trips in her races, so that's a little bit of a feather in her cap. Um, she's very, very well connected. Um, she should be, you know, in the mix, I would think, as they come to the stretch of this race. And then we'll just see if she's good enough. You know, 7-2 to two on the morning line, and it feels like she could be around that price. I didn't really want to bet her at anything like that, but she could win. Next thing to get some black type for the American Pharaoh filly, the seventh Scarabia coming off a maiden win. We'll watch that race over the synthetic surface going a mile and three sixteenths. It just seems over this Gulf Stream Tapita, you want to be wide. You want to be from off the pace. And this is exactly what occurred here. She gets up and wins. And now she gets a tremendous class test. Yeah, they're going to step her way up in this race. Her last two starts on synthetic are both pretty good. Now they're going to come back to turf. But I felt like her turf form um, earlier last year, I thought her, those, those races were okay, Dan. It feels like she has a lot of upside. She's got a really nice pedigree. Um, to me, this was, you know, it, will she be a surprising winner? I guess she would. To me, this was the kind of race where I wanted horses like her. Um, I feel like if she could take some kind of a step forward here, which isn't impossible, uh, maybe she can make your exotics. Here's another potentially late developing Shug McGahee horse, Hungry Kit. And I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm frustrated when I watch her run. I watched her in the Zagora two starts back. She's going nowhere on the turn. The whip is out. It looks like she's just going to run last. And then the next thing you know, she picks it up at the 316th pole and she's kind of flying home. And Jose Ortiz is like, whoa, I got to put on the brakes because I'm running over to top of horses. Yeah, true enough. I, you know, when I watched that race back, I sort of felt like, you know, you know where she's going to be early. She's going to be trailing um, just under a rating hold. Um, to me, when I watched it back, though, Dan, right around that final turn when Ortiz decided, let's try to edge up on this field, that's exactly when the pace picked up. All the leaders ran away from her again, and they just sort of left her out of position, and she was finishing in there. I thought she ran really well that day. I even felt like she ran pretty well last time. Just, uh, you know, once again, it's kind of the story of her life coming too late in that race. Um, but, you know, you have to worry about that with a horse like her, with her running style. But I actually feel like she's pretty good, and I think she fits in this race. I really liked some of her races back in 2020, especially that Zagora, where yet again, she was flying at the end, and she got a tough beat. Honor Hop is interesting for Brian Lynch. Let's watch her last race at Keeneland, her final start of 2021, middle of October. Uh, she's able to get to the outside. She was able to lay up close in this race. And once she gets into the clear, going to come with the run, going to finish second. Oh, I thought she had this for a second. Yeah, she did. it felt like she had dead aim on it. And right from, you know, outside the eighth pole, it just, it always looked like she was going to win. And then for whatever reason, she just couldn't get there. Um, to me, it just feels like she has to improve to win this race, but it feels like she could get a good trip in here. I think she can get a good trip, but she is stepping up into the stakes competition for the first time, likely tougher than what she faced in that last start. Top picks for the grade three, La Prevoyante. I don't really want to have too much in against always shopping, Mike. Uh, I just think that she's in very, very good form right now. Uh, hate the price, but Hungry Kitten, I can certainly see where you're going there. There's something there. Yeah, I just, I didn't want to take the short price on always shopping. She's the horse to beat in here. I didn't trust her enough to take the short price. I want to give this closer one more chance. Mike's going to go with Hungry Kitten. We'll see if Shug can get it done in the grade three. La Prevoyante. Good luck.